Hey guys, Pastor Craig here. Just want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving and a blessed Christmas. This is my favorite time of the year. It starts getting nice and cool and get to have Thanksgiving eat. That's something I really like to do, as many of you could tell who've ever seen me a person. But uh, I just want to give you a quick little message that I kind of felt God put on my heart because I don't know if you noticed, but Thanksgiving can be pretty stressful. Um, and if you've noticed, we're kind of dealing with a pretty divided country right now. And maybe you have some liberal family members like mine who kind of say they're Christian, but really are pretty liberal in their living and their thoughts. But uh, I want you to notice that uh, the Bible says in Romans ten fourteen, how shall they believe him of whom they have not heard? That's Jesus. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And verse 15 says, and how shall they preach unless they are sent? And some of you might be saying, well, Pastor Craig, I, I'm not a preacher like you. I'm not a preacher. Well, you have to know that you have, you're a Christian. You've been sent by Christ to be a witness. You've been sent the Great Commission. Go and make disciples of all nations. And, and we just saw this this weekend studying the Gospel of John John chapter 20, verse 21 says, Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Do you hear that? Just as we saw Jesus so powerfully witness of the Father's love and, and showing that he came to die for our sins, we're to go out and tell people the good news of Jesus. So if you're a Christian, then you're sent to be a preacher. You might not get paid for it like I do. That's my full-time job. But your, your main reason to be at Raytheon or wherever you are is to be a preacher, and especially this holiday season with your unsaved family members, to tell them the good news of Jesus and to be willing to debate. Because I'm going to true truth, the, Jesus said the truth will set you free. And we believe that biblical arguments are true, amen, and they should be, win the, 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 the debate. Truth shall always win. But we're going to see in a second um, that not always everyone wants the truth. Jesus said, though, hear this, John 19, 10, for the Son of Man came to what? To seek and to save that which is lost. So we need to have his heart for those who are lost in our family. And it's easy, like I can say it's my weakness that I've been yelled at, cussed at, screamed at about Jesus so much that sometimes I don't want to say anything anymore. And we're going to hopefully dive into that balance here. But the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 2.23, it says, Avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And so we have to discern, is this person want truth or does this person just want to fight with me? And sometimes people just want to fight me, fight you. Uh, when I had a live call in radio show, people would say, I would say, hey, if I can answer your question well, will you consider Christ? And some people would say, no, not at all. And I'd be like, then why are you calling? What are you doing? Did you just want to argue with me? And they'd be like, yeah, pretty much. And we have to kind of say, hey, we don't want to just argue for argument's sake. We want to debate or discuss to, to win people to Christ, right? The, the Bible says, always be ready to give an account for the hope within you. Always be ready to tell people why Jesus makes sense to you biblically. And uh, we need to do that. So how do we know whether we should debate with someone or whether we should not, we should not. How do we know this? Well, Proverbs 26, 4 says this, do not answer the fool's, fool's arguments, or sorry, do not answer the foolish arguments of fools or you'll become foolish as they are. Verse 5, but be sure to answer the foolish arguments of fools or they will become wise in their own eyes, their own estimation. So, how do you know when? Think about it, saying don't argue with a fool, but then it says there's a time to argue with a fool. And we have to discern, does this person just want to argue, right? Are they willfully, because when Proverbs calls someone a fool, it means they're willfully ignorant. The Bible says in Psalms, a fool says in his heart, there is no God. That's someone who chooses to ignore God. I always say, it's amazing how atheists hate a God that they say doesn't exist. And so that's someone who's willfully ignorant. But is this person just kind of ignorant where they really don't know the truth? I was an ignorant liberal hippie that didn't know the truth. 
but I deep down wanted the truth. And those are the people we have to say, Lord, bring us to the Craig Roeders out there who look scary. I had long hair. I was a liberal, hated Reagan. I was a, when I, before I got saved, it was Reagan was president. I hated Reagan. And God just turned my heart around. And we need to say, God, bring us to those kind of people. Amen. So when you're debating with someone about Christianity or say politics, like should there be abortion, you need to ask yourself, does this person want truth? Or does this person just want to argue? And that's where you need to avoid foolish arguments. That's where you need to say, you need to pray for discernment from the Holy Spirit. Lord, does this person want the truth? Or does this person just want to bust my chops? And if they just want to bust your chops, you probably shouldn't be uh, talking with them. I love what one of my professors in Bible college said, that, that a liberal or a fool, a lot of times a fool will say, I shouldn't say liberal, a fool will say, don't confuse me with the facts. I've already made up my mind. Did you hear that? Don't confuse me with the facts. I've already made up my mind. We need to say, Lord, bring us people that when they hear f facts that contradict their argument, that they'll realize, wait a sec, that doesn't make sense. I love what uh, Isaiah says, let us reason together. And we need to find people who want reason, who want truth, right? Jesus said those, Jesus said this, um, Verse 18, or John 18, 37, he said, all those who love truth recognize what I say is true. So those who are on the side of truth will know whether the word, Jesus' words, if they want truth, they're going to hear Jesus' words. That's what it's saying. Isn't that cool? If people want truth, they're going to go, oh, wow, that's true. That's who I was. When people started sharing the gospel with me when I was 18 years old, I went, oh my goodness, this is true. This is so radical for anything I've ever heard, but this is true. It just rung true to me. I just was like, wow. I was like, I was like a moth to the flame. I just couldn't get enough of it. We also need to ask ourselves, do we just want to, as we debate people or talk to people, do we just want to win the argument or do we really care about the person? Now, I was, the our proverb says, a fool loves contention. I was one of those people when I first got saved. I still love to fight. I love to fight before as a Christian, and then I kind of like to fight as a Christian. I liked to when I was early days. But I need to realize that I would debate people, and one guy at my work at, at Ventana back in 86 said, Craig, you debated me so hard and fierce that I felt like an ink spot on the, on the, on the asphalt. Now, I kind of felt good about that. I won, but then I kind of went, wait a sec. I didn't really win because I didn't win him because I just crushed him. And we need to really care about the person we're talking to and really try to reach their heart to, with truth, not just for our self-esteem to say, I won, I'm the man, who's your daddy? No, that's wrong. We need to say, I want to speak the truth in love to them to win their heart for Christ. Amen. Either to win them to Christ for the first time or win them back. Well, holidays can be very tough, as but we need to do our best to seek out those, especially in our family or relatives, who deep down want the truth. But we have to also remember that there are those, hear this, as I said earlier, that don't want the truth. And they might sadly, like some people in my family, call themselves Christian, but, though, but, but they don't really act Christian or hold to the biblical Jesus. And we have to say, hey, we have to hear the Bible. A lot of scriptures we have in our, in our Bibles, but we don't really hear them or live by them. But hear this, this is one scripture that kind of answers me with my family sometimes. It's 2 Timothy 3, 5. It says, they will act religious. This is from the New Living. I like the way it says it. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. And what's that power? The Holy Spirit. And here's this. No one talks about this, but it says, from such people... Stay away. Stay away from people like that. Stay away. Because why? All they want to do is argue. All they want to do is talk about this Jesus that isn't biblical. Like my family will say, hey, I believe in Jesus. But I'll say, well, wait, but do you believe in the Jesus of the Bible? John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. They'll say, oh, no, I don't believe that. Well, that's not the biblical Jesus, and that's not holding to the truth, that that's a religious person rather than someone I believe who has a sincere relation with Christ. Because as one pastor said, one man of God said it this way, you can get a lot of things wrong in Christianity, but the deity of Christ and Jesus being the only way, that's something you can't get wrong. So we need to pray 
this holiday season, this Thanksgiving season, this Christmas season. We need to pray for discernment, discernment of those who want truth and those who do not. James 1.5 says, whoever lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to them. If you say, God, give me wisdom, lead me to the relatives, even the hard ones who want truth. Because like I said, if you had seen me before Christ, you'd say, there's no way that guy's getting saved. He is a freak. He's a bonehead. He's a liberal. He is just whacked out of his mind because I was doing a lot of drugs and I really had some wacky ideas. But pray also to be filled with the Holy Spirit who gives you the right words to say. I love this scripture. This is my, I like to quote this scripture as a pastor because uh, I need the right words. I'm not always a wordsmith, as a lot of you know. But Luke 12, 12 says this, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. And the Bible also says the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. I always love it when you pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit and all of a sudden you're witnessing to someone and just... You just words flow, and it's, I always jokingly say it's so good that you want to take notes in yourself because you know it's the Holy Spirit. And so just really believe that. Pray for wisdom, and then second, pray that the Holy Spirit will fill you and give you the words, just give you those right words. Like it says they praise, the early church praising God, enjoying favor with all the people. Pray for that godly favor without compromise. They enjoyed favor with all the people, and the Lord added daily those who are being saved. We need to pray for that favor. Lord, give me favor. A lot of pastors seek favor through compromise, but we don't want comp we don't favor through smoke and through skinny jeans and through just saying Jesus is a way. We want favor because we honor God, and the Bible says God honors those who honor him. We want the favor that comes from God. So Christians, be encouraged because God still has us here for a reason. Do you realize that? The fact that we're not raptured, shows that there are a lot of Craig Roters out there. There's a lot of liberals out there. There's a lot of people out there who still want truth. But how will they know unless a preacher sent? So Jesus is sending you. And so I'm sending you as your pastor. If I'm your pastor, if I'm not your pastor, hey, I'm still sending you as a Christian brother. And if you're not a Christian, then get saved so you can go help people. But the hope for America, the hope is not going to be won in the Congress or the Senate. It's going to be, as Ted Cruz said to me personally once, the way we're going to see America turn around is through the churches, through people sharing Christ with people and God changing the hearts of America. Amen. And when no one had to tell me to become a conservative. When I got saved, God spoke to me and God changed my heart and changed my thinking. And I became a conservative that held to biblical worldview, which took away a lot of my liberal worldview. Amen. So I want to encourage you. I want to pray for you to become that witness this holiday season and to be encouraged. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for everyone who hears this. And I pray, Lord, right now, if there's someone he listening who's not a Christian, I just ask right now, they would just say, Jesus, I give you my life. I surrender my life. Your word says to all who receive him, John 1, 12, to all receive him, he gives the right to become children of God. So, Lord, I ask that they would just ask you into their heart and surrender their life and say, God, I'm tired of running my life into the wall. I want you to run my life in truth and, and change my life and save my life and forgive me of my sin. If you pray that prayer, you're saved. If you pray that with sincerity, you'll be saved. But, Lord, I also pray for those who are saved, those who know you. Give them courage. Give them strength, as I always say in the pulpit, that the world is coming out of the closet radically. All different genders, all different crazy things going on. But Lord, help us as Christians to come out of the closet and speak the truth in love. Bless your people. Encourage your people to be that witness to a lost and dying world. And to not see this as a drudgery. Oh, no, the holidays. Oh, no, I got to deal with Aunt Lucy and Uncle Tony. No. This is a privilege that I get to fulfill the Great Commission and to seek and to save those who are lost, that I get to speak the truth in love with the desire to win their hearts for you, to see people that get to, get to seek and to save that which is lost, and then to bring those maybe have known you but have fallen away back to you, to bring the prodigal sons and daughters back. So, Lord, bless your people, and we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. I love you guys. 
Bless you and have a great Thanksgiving and a blessed Christmas and a happy new year. Love you guys.